Hello and welcome to Colour Multimedia Enterprises. My name is Luke, also known as Tiana Ray. And you're probably wondering, oh, a video. What's this going to be about? It's not a tutorial. It's going to be about an editor that I've been wanting to develop for quite some time. And this editor is getting along quite well, surprisingly well in fact. I've managed to get quite a lot done in the past three days or so so what I've managed to do is get a fully functional integrated command line which means that everything done in the standard output and the standard error gets fully parsed either in the console or errors section accordingly so when you create hex projects um, so you can go into documents or whatever folder it is let's just go into desktop for example um, oh. let it do its thing unless of course for whatever reason there's a bug and it can't load <laughs> all of a sudden that would be annoying why is it taking so long what the hell okay here we go probably a reason why there's so much stuff yeah that's the reason why <laughs> so anyway let's um, so what I could do is uh, create a folder in this desktop um, so let's create one and that uh, what shall I call it uh, test project let's say that's not going to work, is it? Test project. So that there's test project right there. So what I can do is then open folder, and navigate to that, and basically what that I haven't made the functionality to have those spaces work correctly. Let's say um, so. It's probably something that we need to do. So I can then. Don't, not TSRC, what the hell's wrong with me? I'm an SRC. SRC line up. Folder, build, or assets. Um, I can create a hex class like this. And in here, I could create. A variety of different things that I want to do so what I could do is obviously this technically can't be a public function new this has to be a public static function main like that and I could just print something out on the screen uh, so let's just say running is equal to true so I'm just gonna get this up real quick just to uh, show you exactly how this editor works in its current state um, so what I can then do is <coughs> uh, trying to think um, need to get the std in is that how you do it? I can't bloody remember. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Uh and the API hakes. So let's go down to sys. Let's take a look in here. I am going to take a look at it won't be get character, it would be do, 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 do. STD in, yeah, 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 I thought it might have been, okay, but it's all lowercase, so we want to get the standard input, so var input is equal to, so it's not standard input, there is no order completion in this editor, just so that you are aware, um, that is going to come a bit later, I'm not, order completion isn't really something that I'm prioritizing I'll, I'll 
go through the future at the moment. <laughs> um, so, yeah. We are going to get the input. I want to check to see what that input read string is. If it is exit, then we want to say running is equal to false. And all of this actually needs to be within a while running statement. Like that. That's not good. Wrong way. What am I doing? <laughs> I haven't got a bloody clue. Okay, so if we do that, what we can do then is we can go into here. What I will do is I'm going to create a file which is a build file. So there are two different ways in which I can actually build this. I can build it just using a basic command line uh, application. So I could just do dash cpsrc which is of course the directory that I want to put it in uh, dash cpp uh, build that's where it's going to go um, and main main like that and what I would then like to do is um, well, I'm not going to be I'm not using any libraries so I can just enter that oh what's going on so this is actually a good time for me to actually show you exactly how this works. So now that there are errors, it actually checks to see what the errors are. So what what I can do is I can double click and it will actually go to the line that it's in. So what I'll do is actually close this. Um, and if I double click, it actually opens the file and goes to the line. It moves the correct to the line that you are on. So let's see input dot read string string should be int for function argument len that's length what input dot read. i'm obviously doing this wrong input let's have a look should be read string oh perhaps i shouldn't be using that uh okay fair enough <laughs> reads read line let's do read line that's exit uh, save that and then we go back to the console build it and as you can see it automatically does everything it needs to do oh process creation failure cl.exe that's not good why is it doing that for <laughs> I don't like the looks of that. For the time being, I'll just do dash Nico um, build slash um, Nico slash main dot n like that. So yeah, I didn't like the looks of that. So let's take a look at this. Um, hopefully this will work. Oh, this is probably one of the issues that I wanted to fix. Um, so if I refresh this, Nico, main dot, and yeah, that, that actually works. Um, yeah, because for some reason that text box just becomes disabled. And I need to fix that, obviously, as you can probably tell. Because for whatever reason, and I'm not entirely sure why, but I think it's got something to do with the fact... Bring up more details. With the fact that it thinks that the background process is still running, but it's not. It's already done. But for some reason it's not disposing the object, which is really weird. Still trying to figure it out. Still trying to figure it out. Okay, I'm gonna just quit out of this and. Um, where could it be? Where could it be? Let's. Right, 
let's go to key up okay so press enter go into current folder is not equal to that so we say that starts with that then do that current folder is not empty then we start the build because that assumes that we're building um, so start build um, that should really be called uh, execute command but <laughs> that will have to do for the time being um, I'm not going to mess about with that for the time being so let's take a look in here so that's all fine get the command process we execute that command we start the process pass in the process into the process item manager read the out the standard output an error then we start process output read um, on std out read on std out error let's go to that see that's true if we go to the definition for this we scroll down that's then true there so I really don't know what's going on um, what we could do is try some kind of timeout session I suppose Huh. Mm, yeah, I'll look into that a bit later. Okay, let's go back into test projects and I'll show you the other thing that I was also going to take a look at. I'm not going to execute it on the console again because obviously that needs fixing. Uh, but once that is fixed and I've got it actually working, then I'll actually release the product. But there is one other way in which you can build projects, and that is through the idea of file build.tse. So you can create a JSON formatted file which does build configuration. Now, the .tse file is it actually it, the build configuration file needs to be build.tse. That's what it needs to be. So, in order to create one, what you have is a variety of variables that you need to pass in. So, the build command is the command that you want to use. Um, so, no, it's not that one. <laughs> I thought I saved it, obviously not. So, hx-cp, um, I could say that is going to be uh, src, right, dash main, main, dash nico nico slash main dot n so I can do that and I can also specify that this target is nico and this, this because it's the first index in this array it is specified as the default and the default is when you control alt m which is the shortcut for executing the default build command which is this one here because this is the first index so control alt m is the is where you would go so what i will also do is let's say build command hx dash cp src dash main main dash cs and then I could do cs slash um, is cs a folder or c sharp let's take a look manual uh, to, to, to do compiler usage cs yeah yeah it is a directory okay uh, so let's go back in here so let's just do that that's all we need to do so what I can now do I can build in two different ways from a 
build configuration file. So when I save this, what I can do is in the console, I can either do dash build CS, which will build it on that target. So, I'm, so I'll press enter on that. It'll build the executable using that command. This command right here, hex dash cpsrc slash, and then all of that. So it does it all for you. So you don't have to type it in over and over again. And that is still building apparently. Or is it? Or we know it's probably still complaining. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, yeah. So, again, I need to fix that, as you can probably tell. <laughs> so, I can go back. So, if I go back in, open that folder again. As you can tell, this is kind of annoying. <laughs> but, yeah, I will fix that. I will fix that before I uh, release it. So, what I can do is... Control M, and it will build the Nico file. Um, as you can see, the text box is greyed out again. Um, another thing that you can do is, while you're in the text editor, if you have any errors, you can do Control Alt N, not M, to go to the next error within the list. So that you can identify where the errors are. So, yeah. As you can tell, the application is called Twinspire. I'm think hmm, I'm thinking of making it commercial at some point once I've added a lot more features to it. Obviously, in its current state, I'm not going to be selling it. It is going to literally be a beta, and it is also going to be open source. For those of you wondering whether or not the entire thing is going to be open source, probably not. There is a few features that I would like to implement, such as live previewing and live server hosting, um, which will all be closed source. Um, but some other features will, of course, be open source, such as what you see now. But as the project grows, and hopefully with your support, it will grow and be better than perhaps Flash Develop. <laughs> and as far as I'm concerned, this is already better than Flash Develop um, without otherwise taking into account the order completion feature. And the reason I say that, I'm not just bragging and saying that, yeah, it is actually better. <laughs> it The reason I say that is because, A... It doesn't do error handling as well. I mean, when you build, it doesn't actually say, okay, in file line message, it actually shows you all of that stuff, and you can do control alt n to go to the next error. As far as I'm concerned, Flash Develop doesn't have that functionality. Not, that, not from what I can tell. Of course, this needs... This could do with cleaning up, just identifying what's uh, folders and what isn't. Um, so adding icons there would be nice, of course, um, and understanding the diff and distinguishing the difference between icons and folders, because sometimes you can have files such as license, for example, with absolutely no extension whatsoever, and when you double click on something that doesn't have an extension it doesn't actually open because it the ter it thinks it's a directory but it isn't so again that needs to be fleshed out a bit as well so not everything is brilliant in this editor there do it, there does still need to be improvements but for the time being this project will be open source because it will be commercial um, eventually, 
I will not be accepting pull requests. At least not in its not well, in its current form I'll accept pull requests. Once I start adding more and more features and making it better and turning it into more of a professional editor with fully functional order completion and debugging and profiling and all sorts of different things even the visual editor then that's when it will be sold and that's when things start to become closed source just so that you are aware so thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed and yeah I'll see you next time.